Wong speaking overnight. Now, the federal government's emissions trading scheme looks almost certain to be defeated in the Senate. Yesterday, the opposition announced it will move to defer a vote on the bill until next year after global climate change, change talks in Copenhagen in December. Andrew Robb is the opposition's emissions trading spokesman and he joins us now from Canberra. Andrew Robb, good morning and thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning, Virginia. If the coalition has agreed to support the government's carbon reduction targets, why should we wait for Copenhagen to determine the detail of our domestic scheme? Well, the main thing at Copenhagen is, is to negotiate an, an objective, a target that the world will commit to. That is, that's the principal objective. And in fact, overnight at a major business forum in Copenhagen, organised by the, the, the body, the UN body, which will coordinate the whole Copenhagen conference, the executive secretary of that UN body said that there is no need to finalise legislation before Copenhagen. He said that in response to an explicit question put to him, and it does, I think, expose the political agenda of the federal government in rushing this scheme through. They want to, almost inviting people to block what is a deeply flawed scheme for political purposes, when the, the head of the UN body organising Copenhagen is saying quite explicitly there is no need to finalise legislation before Copenhagen. But, but I return to my original observation, which I, I don't think you've quite uh, addressed, and that is that if you're prepared to agree with, to sign off on the, the, the target, the reduction target that the government is going to take to Copenhagen, then in a bipartisan way, the two sides of politics should be able to start talking about the method, the form in which that reduction is achieved. Well, we've been engaging on that process now for 12 months. The no, bottom line is, and, as far excuse, as I can sorry. You, the bottom line is, as your introduction uh, observed, there is no one. Not it's not just us. The Greens think this is deeply flawed. They're going to vote it down. Uh, the, the independent senators think it's deeply flawed. Many green groups, many business groups. So many people are imploring the government to get down and and make changes to a deeply flawed scheme. We can't have a scheme come in which which costs tens of thousands of jobs, kills investment and does nothing, in fact, for reducing CO2 emissions. So what we're saying is the Copenhagen Conference tells the world the level of commitment around the world and gives a sort of time frame and an ability to adjust any, any scheme to accommodate the rate of progress around the world. The United States, who will, in fact, you know, dictate, really, in the end what most of the world does. They are the biggest emitter. They are the wealthiest country. They are now engaged. They are now well, well advanced with legislation. It will, be, it will be close to finalised, I think, by the end of the year. We're saying common sense suggests you've now got a target. You've got a united position on a target. We've given you that. We share that. What we're saying to the government is go to Copenhagen with that target, have a negotiating position, and then come back and look at what the United States has done, what the world has decided, and then fix up the flaws that are in your scheme. All right. So, so how would you propose then to meet the targets that you've just supported? Well, we have been, we have been very assiduously uh, looking to improve and develop a scheme or, or contribute to the development of this, the government scheme. We have commissioned a major independent study which said that there's a series of, of analyses that need to be done, can be done, should have been done, can be done in the next six months. Now the government's delayed the start date. There is no imperative to have this thing finalised in June. All that will do is lead to a, a scheme which is deeply flawed and will probably you know, result in the community support diminishing for any scheme if they bring this scheme in. We're saying do this analysis and see if we can correct the deep flaws in your scheme as a means of addressing this issue. So you then don't have a proposal for how you well, meet those targets? I mean, you're talking there about commissioning more, more investigations, no, more analysis. But, no, quite the contrary. But, but no We've, direct answer there. No, no, it's quite the contrary. Yesterday we put on the table a proposal for a government-authorised voluntary scheme with, with bankable credits. That, by, by the Australian 
the, the Australian exchange have said that would deliver the 5% targets. It would result in major activity towards uh, sequestration and abatement activity across the country. There is something that could start on January 1 next year which would see an immediate response on so many areas including renewables. Th that is a proposal that we put on the table. The government has not even responded in any sense to that because they know it would deliver immediate action which would deliver 5% targets in its own right before you even finalise any sort of emissions trading scheme. So we have put a very constructive position on the table and we've told the government what process they can undertake to, to develop a scheme which is robust, which will not cost tens of thousands of jobs and which will lead to significant cuts in emissions. It's That's the process they should pursue. It's true, isn't it, Andrew, Rob, that when it comes to the future of any kind of emissions trading scheme in this country, and <clears throat> your leader, Malcolm Turnbull, has been ferociously in support of one for some time, that you don't have unanimous agreement in your party to support any kind of emissions trading scheme, do you? No, not not no, unanimous not true. support. That's not true. What we had yesterday in the party room was a united view that the scheme that the government, and by the way, they're the government, right? They're the government, and we've been, we've been looking at the scheme that they've been proposing, and we've been seeking to make suggestions. We've made a series of suggestions over many months about how they can correct the deep flaws in, in the scheme that they are developing. We had a united view, which I think shared by the Greens in this country, that this scheme is deeply flawed. And they no, need but I'm, to, I'm, asking government... something, I'm asking something different there, Andrew Rob. I mean, and we have heard you make that point several times this morning. It's that there's not a unanimous coalition position on an ETS at all, which means it doesn't matter what the government comes back to you saying, it needs the coalition's support on this to get it through the Senate. You can't give it to the government because you're not united on an ETS. Wilson Tucky says he wouldn't support any, uh, any ETS under any circumstances. Virginia, yesterday we had... We had a unanimous agreement to advocate and move quickly for the introduction of a voluntary carbon market in this country, which could start on January 1 next year, 2010, and it could deliver the 5% targets. It puts a lie to the government's suggestion that we have put nothing forward of any constructive nature. It's far more substantive than waiting another two years for the start of a scheme that they're proposing, and one at the moment that's deeply flawed. There are things that can be done immediately and we have ad we're the ones who have advocated that. Now, we will, we will want to see a robust scheme. We, bear in mind, we had, a, we had an emissions trading scheme on the table 12 months before this government's first, first effort. And, and even that scheme had features in it which were, which were far more sensible than what we see in this government scheme. The trouble all along, there is a, there is a political agenda here, Virginia, it's all a take-it-or-leave-it approach. They won't listen to the Greens. They won't listen to the Coalition. They're saying the legislation must be through. Yet overnight, the, the, those running, the UN people running the Copenhagen Conference said it, legislation does not need to be finalised before the Copenhagen Conference. They understand that the, the first step must be to see what is the extent of commitment around the world and then the schemes subsequently being developed Will, will align with that level of commitment, will take account of the, the staged approach of different countries coming into some sort of program over the next few years. Andrew Rob, good to have you on the program this morning. Thank you. Thanks very much, Virginia. The trial of Aung San Suu